Hi, welcome to another edition of Relatable. I'm your host, Stephanie Michelle. How's everyone doing today? It's almost, I don't know, fall. It's kind of fall. I hope the cherries are changing. Um, you know, if, if you need to check in of how you're doing today, here's a simple check. Do you have food and water? Check. Do you know somebody that loves you? Are you safe from dangerous weather, sickness, and bullies? I'm saying if you can say, uh, yeah, I'm good on all of those things. I think we're doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good if I don't have any of those things going on. Uh, I spent most of my weekend doing updates to my website. Yeah, I know that sounds really exciting. Um, it wasn't. <laughs> There's a lot of technical stuff involved. But one thing that I got to do was go back and look at past shows and take a little screenshot of the guests that like really captured their essence. And then I um, was able to put a caption with it to say, you know, why this person was so amazing and is so amazing. And, uh, you know, I found myself really smiling over those moments, like re remembering what it was like to be in the moment with this person and uh, sharing whatever we were talking about. And, you know, it made me pretty happy. And, you know, I'm wondering, um, you know, did these moments just happen or are they something that we create? And I would say that they're a little bit of both. You know, here I'm providing a space and a time for um, people to come in and talk and for me to learn about them. And it's a safe environment, you know, that's just safe to, for people to express themselves in the way that they want. And, uh, and then people show up and we talk and they surprise me and it's awesome. And I wonder through the noise of social media and entertainment and the news, is there still space for us to surprise each other in this way? Are we creating moments for each other just because with no intention of ever posting it on social media? I think this is the stuff that really makes relationships thrive and we really like think about like, I really wanna have this special moment with a friend or family member. And uh, guess what? When you, know, you put a little effort into creating them, you thrive too. So just think about that, like create some moments. Um, I know my guest knows about this and what it takes to make relationships thrive. Today I'm joined by Kate Anthony. She's a certified life coach who helps women decide if they should stay or leave their marriages. Big, tough decision. Kate empowers women to find their strengths, their passion, confidence, and, and confidence even in the most deep um, uh, empowering of circumstances. It helps them move forward on concrete plans with a solid foundation of putting their children in the center, in the center, not in the middle, she says, of all of those decisions. In addition to her certification, Kate has also trained as a relationship coach and is an expert in communication, co-parenting, and emotional intelligence. All of my favorite topics. <laughs> this is going to be a good show. So welcome, Kate. How are you doing? Thank you. I am so happy to be here. Yeah. And we should just, for the record, let everybody know, we did not call each other. We so did We did not text <laughs> with the black jeans and the blue tops. We're just, you know, blondes that love blue, right? Right. You said, wear your fa the color you look best in. I was like, blue. Blue. And so yeah. here we are. Yeah. That's how it That's funny. Elijah also, Elijah behind the camera also has a blue shirt on just for you guys at home to, to know. Um, it's a thing. It's I hope a, you guys are changing now really quickly. Yeah, yeah. Everybody your, put, your blue blue. put your blue on. Put your blue, blue on. on. It's time for blue. So Kate, I ask everybody that joins us on, on the show um, before we talk about today's topic, which is a big one, yeah. a big decision. Yeah. Is there anything that you just want to share to, that it's like, hey, this is kind of on my mind. I experienced this this morning. Just to get it off your chest so we can focus on today's topic. That's such a great question. I love it. Um, it. It's funny. The thing that happened this morning was a Facebook debate. Hello, <laughs> Facebook. Um, about toxic masculinity. Uh. <laughs> so we're just going to dive right in. Um, and about, I received an email from a man this morning, uh, two emails, and he was clearly in a lot of pain, mm -hmm. and he was clearly angry, and I, I get emails from men all the time. My work speaks to women. I sp speak mostly so are to Are they upset that you're like helping women decide, make no, that decision? No, you know, a lot of them are like, I actually relate to everything you're saying, but I'm a man. Yeah. Well, do you work with men? Or or they're, they're kind of spying for the, you know, on, on, the, on the other team and yeah. trying to gather intel and like, what is my wife doing? What is she learning about? And sometimes I'll get, you know, I have one friend who, who's now a dear, dear friend who sent me an email. And he said, you know, he was like, I'm, I'm pissed. Yeah. And I said, 
you know, I, I, I get it. And we ended up we ended up becoming great friends. And I've ended up helping him a lot. And actually, he's working on saving his marriage now, which is yeah, wonderful. Wonderful. At the time, he was getting divorced. So it's fabulous. My point is that this man who emailed me this morning was not coming at it that way. Yeah. Um, I have a quiz on my website that says, that's called the Should I Stay or Should I Go quiz. And I said, and he said, oh, suddenly I'm taking a quiz about whether about how I fight with my husband. And I was like, well, nobody forced you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nobody's, to, anyway. So the, the debate that ensued on Facebook was, sh should I engage with this man who's, mm -hmm. who's coming at me a little aggressively, yeah. but is obviously in pain? Yeah. Or do I just not engage? Do we not engage with people who are in pain but don't know how to come at it? Yeah. And frankly, this is sort of the crux of all the work that I do, and we'll get into it, yeah. right? Is, so... So anyway, that was what was on my mind. And it's a really interesting debate that's unfolding. And I have friends in both camps. And yeah, right? Like, yeah, I've, I've experienced this actually. So, um, you know, this is the second year of doing this show. And I'm pretty fascinated. I don't know if that's the right word about this mas this toxic masculinity. Um, and wanting to be able to help, you know, I'm like not all women, right. not all men is like where it needs to start. You know, I'm, I'm sorry you've had this experience, but like, to you know, approach everything now with hey, that's like oh, my heart like really feels for you, right? So I did engage with a group, um, men going their own way, and actually was gonna, you know, I was interested in talking with them, like having them on. But um, where I decided in that equation, where I had to ask myself, um, do I pursue this conversation? Is well, after a couple interactions, it was clear that this person I was talking to and would not identify his name by the way, and we're like he's sending me like pages of oh. emails like just blah 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 blah, blah. Um, but he was clearly leaned towards hate he was yeah. not interested right. in understanding he was not interested in a true dialogue of compassion and like learning or any of that so it's like that's where I draw the line so it's I'll totally. try like yeah you, you, and I'm sure you do you're gonna try to talk to him but I you're am. gonna have a couple you're gonna be triggered in a way like okay this is you know I want to help you like I actually am here to try to understand but if that the the skew towards hate continues like I can't there's help nothing you. I can do about it there's yeah. nothing I can do about it and I and I do I, I have a policy a very open policy yeah. that I respond to every email that I receive I try to as well. and I do it personally I don't have an assistant do this for me um and you know for now maybe someday it'll get too <laughs> overwhelming but for now I do it myself and it's a lot it actually takes yeah. a lot of work yeah and a lot of effort because I don't reply you know three words I, I'm very responsive so I, I talk about that on my podcast. So he's obviously found me some way, yes. right? And so he's expecting a response, and I will respond. But if he is not open, yeah, then the conversation's over yeah. for me, right? And yeah. I and and this is I this is a huge thing that I believe in. That when I talk about toxic masculinity, I want to be really clear about this. When I talk about toxic masculinity, I am not talking about I'm not anti male. I believe that men are victims of our culture, current culture that doesn't allow and hold, uh, allow for and hold their emotional responses. And so what they've learned to do is repress their emotions and they come out aggressively when they don't want that. They don't mean it. They, it doesn't serve them, mm -hmm. right? So I'm not, when I talk about getting a message from a man who's clearly sort of in some kind of toxic space with his own masculinity, his own emotional responses, that, like, oh my God, I would love to draw him out. Oh my God, I would love to mm -hmm. have, you know, to, to have him find a space where he can let that go. Yeah. And let go of anger and really get in touch with what's underneath it. Mm -hmm. You know, men are, are horribly victimized by this. Yeah. I, there's two things about this. Is we're gonna, I, we're, I'm actually going to have a couple of men from the Mankind Project on, um, I think, in October. And they do this yeah, work. They help right. like men that have not that maybe fatherless men or that are you know working through these things. Yeah. Um, and and where I come from in, in this perspective is you know well, there's two things. One is um, I think what we're experiencing in in many ways is like women for a long time more than men have been told we're not great. You know like you're you're this you're that you know oh you we don't deserve to have property we you know we don't have rights we can't vote right. like we've been told generations of, of time over and over again you're not great right. you're like you're less than mm -hmm. right and so we listen because we are just trained that way we like to you know we listen and yeah. we read how self 
help books. We sought help. We asked our um, grandmother for advice. We talked to each other about it. And we have evolved in a way that we're like, yeah, I got this. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I can embrace being a woman and having maybe some masculine traits or, you know, living up to what society is expecting of me. And so there's that has kind of created a situation where men are like, oh, now what do we do? Yeah. And I hope the answer is, well, you get to grow too, but like find a way to do it, you know, find a, yes. find a way that's supportive. So I think that's part of it. But then the other side of this that I know is completely unfair for men um, is, and you will be able to talk about this, is um, divorce and how men in custody cases, like they do, yeah. there, there's some work that needs to be done yeah. there, that men get the short end of the stick yeah. on um, really being able to uh, be considered as a caretaker oh, for yeah, yes. I, I know that, that that's a problem. Oh yes, um, absolutely. So I think absolutely. that's and I and when I read and been in forums, um, that's the thing that comes up the most. And I do think that's what this man was was expressing yeah. and experiencing because he he was talking about um, anti male, uh, basically reverse sexism, like anti and and I get it right yeah. as a and he's a he's a single dad. Mm -hmm. So as a single dad, there are so many structures in place that, you know, there are no uh, changing, they're just starting to become baby changing stations in men's rooms. Mm -hmm. What if you're a single dad with a kid, raising a kid on your own, and you can't change your kid's diaper in a restaurant yeah. because there's no opportunity for you to do that? I just read somewhere, some country, which country is it? Hopefully you know. And oh, if, I, if she doesn't know, I'll look it up know. and we'll post. <laughs> but some, there's some country now that's forcing men to take maternity leave as well, so they get involved in the caretaking yeah. and it's more acceptable. Yeah. I want to say... Forcing, that's interesting. Well, you know, they're, if you, it's like they're giving you vacation time and if you don't take it, well, you don't you you don't get to have it right right to to be involved in the um you know first weeks of caretaking yeah um so forcing might be a strong word but yeah. they're like well if they're offering of, it yeah in a yeah. lot of a lot of Scandinavian countries that's already I kind of that's, that's already happening yeah like, I kind of think that's what I we're so behind yeah <laughs> you know in Canada women get a year lord they get a year of maternity leave wow and here's we're like rushing through like three months and you know stressing that you know. Give me a break, right? right? We could talk about that. That's like we could talk about this topic. all day. Well, exactly. Uh, exactly. Well, it's related, though. So, you know, this decision to stay or go mm. is the toughest decision, no matter what type of relationship we're in, that we could possibly make, right? Yeah. Why is this so hard? What's involved? Well, oh, there's so many layers, right? <laughs> right. So, if you have kids, the, the, there's a, that's a whole other layer, right? right? And that's primarily what I work with. Um, because if you have children, there's plenty out there that tells you you should stay for your kids. Um, you've got previous generations who perhaps did so, stayed for the kids, and sort of feel like, well, I did it, you should do it, mm -hmm. right? I um, sacrificed. Yeah, yeah, I sacrificed. You should do it too, and look how we turned out, and it's fine. And you know, meanwhile, they're like, you know, got diseases. <laughs> I mean, it's not a good thing, yeah. right? Um, but you also want to leave or stay or go for the right reasons. Yeah. Um, there are some statistics that I that I often spout that I, I need to update because a, a colleague of mine told me that they're actually worse now, but I'll go with the ones that I know of, mm -hmm. which is, as we know, 50% of first marriages in the U.S. end. 68% of second marriages end in divorce. 73% of third marriages also end in divorce. Why even bother after the third one? Like, right? right? We're just getting worse and worse and worse Jeez. at this. We are not getting better at this. But there's a reason for it. And I really believe the reason for it is that we don't do the work on ourselves to figure out what went wrong the first time. So we just trade out the partner. We're like, well, he was, he was bad. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'll just replace him. Or she was, you know, whatever it is, right? I'll just replace the person. And, you know... We're we're fit, we're half the problem, right? And if yeah. we don't figure it out, we just keep making the same. And then we realize we're in the same relationship, and we get rid of that one quicker. Yeah, we're like, well, I've already done this. I I'm not doing this again. I don't know a lot of people that are in relationships. I think the happenstance type of relationship where it's like, well, there was nobody better. We're close by, like, you know. So the people just kind of evolve into a situation without. Wait a second. This is yes. what I need. This is what's best for me. This is. This is um, what's important. These are my values and beliefs. This is what we can build on. You know, yes. we don't do that. That's actually not cool. And I'm not talking about, you know, you have dating experts that they'll make, you know, don't do a list. I'm not talking about no. superficial things. I'm no. like just real core, like 
core it's, things. Know your, get to know, you know, how you function in relationships, what you actually need for your relationship to thrive. What's your attachment style? What is your, I, I work with people on their, their parenting history, right? So really, like, how did you learn to love? How, how and is have that, you? And, and have you? And have you? Yeah, because yeah, a lot. Any models for this? Yeah. Right? Um, knowing, really breaking yourself down mm -hmm. and understanding, I call it your operating system, knowing your operating yeah. system so well that I have a very close friend who's a, a relationship, a love dating and relationship coach who just got married, the most beautiful wedding. She's the one who, uh, that I was just at okay, in, yeah. in, in Mexico. And she always, she has a class called your owner's manual. So we do a lot of similar work, right? Yeah. She does it at the, at the onset. I do it at the, at the breakup point, but you know, she calls it your owner's manual and it's your job. I call it your operating system. It is your job to get to know your operating system and then be able to give your owner's yeah. manual to another person yeah. to say, here's what works for me. Yeah. Because most, what we do mostly is get into relationships hoping the other person is going to fix us and feel us and intuitively just know how to be around us, be with us. Um, and it, but it's actually our job to teach them, right? We have to teach people how to be with us. The only way to do that is to get to know ourselves first. And then when they don't do it, when they do it wrong, we get angry, we blame them, we build resentments. We don't know how to heal it or fix it because we actually aren't aware what, of what the problem is to begin with because yeah. we haven't done the work. Totally. Two, the two things are coming up for me is like, yeah. one is like, yeah, we don't do a good job of like those maintenance series of like, okay, this is not working, um, but let's not make it so intense about, oh, everything's broken. It's just like, oh, no, we need a little fixing. Well, right. right. Um, and then two, and um, and I know we both love Harville Hendrix and like mm -hmm. I, that reading, getting the love that you want was, I mean, honestly changed my life, yeah. honestly, because I didn't learn a lot of relationship stuff from my family at all. Right. Um, I feel like I should apologize. Sorry, mom. <laughs> Sorry, parents. If you want, but they mean, I mean, you know, product of divorce. You know, there's things right, that exactly. You, they, I think my parents uh -huh. did the best that they could. I don't think that they really were, should have been. To, you know, were intended to be together. You know, they were kids. Like Warmly. they did the best they could, and they were adults dealing with adult things. And and so kids don't get like the explanation of like why this is working out the way that it is. And you leave with things that you have to deal with. And this is my part two. Is like. A lot of times when we're reacting to something in the relationship, it's not about what's happening right now. It's oh about this it's thing. It's never about what's happening right, <laughs> right now. If you're having a big reaction, we call it having a right-sized reaction or yeah. a not right-sized right. reaction. If you're not having a right-sized reaction about something, it has nothing to do yeah. with what's happening here. Yeah, something's it's, compiled or something's something like triggered. that. You didn't deal with it you know, properly. You didn't let that trauma or a wound heal in a way that you're like, okay, I understand that now. Like I know how to do it better the next time. So yeah. Right. So if you can't stop and you know this, cause you deal with this all the time. Like if we're in a situation where we're like, you did that and I did like, there is no fixing that can be done at that moment. There's no, there yeah. is none. But there if, is none. But if you can say, when you did this, this is what's coming up for me. This is mm -hmm. what I remember. And that and that memory was really painful. And, you know, and so when you do it, it reminds me of that thing my parents would do. And, you know. Mm -hmm. I talk about it like you have an open, festering wound, <laughs> right? And it, when you bump up against my festering wound, yeah. it hurts me deeply. Yeah. But it's still my wound. Because if you bumped up against somebody else in the exact same spot, it wouldn't hurt them. Yeah. I'm still going to get my mic. Sorry. <laughs> um, it wouldn't hurt them. Yeah. Right? So it's my job to say, oh, I've got a really big festering wound here. Can you not bump up against it? Also, I'm going to take my wound away and I'm going to help myself to heal it. And it would really help me actually to heal it if you would not bump into it. Or maybe, you know, can you, can you put some gauze on it? Yeah. Right? So that you're in partnership with it, but it's about the wound. It's not about the other person. Yeah. Right? It's yeah. not about, you did this. You hurt me. You made this wound. No, they didn't. You walked into that with this relationship with that wound. Yeah. You know what's sad? I, what came up for you when you were talking about it is I talked to so many younger generations that are more in this, like, hookup culture. 
and and they're purposely more women, um, I think, than men, because uh, you know the stats on dating apps are more women are looking for relationships and more men are looking to hook up. You know, it's just it is what it is. Really, I hadn't noticed. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is what, it's, it's what's happening. So women will hold back. They'll like they'll let themselves get into a situation where they didn't really want to you know do that sexual thing or that you know so soon and um and they're not sharing their operational manual they feel yep. like well no that's not cool that's not it's not accepted he won't like me anymore he won't text me back like all of these like decisions of like yeah no i don't get to talk like that and that just yeah it makes me sad it's so like it's so and this speaks to what we were talking about before i mean this is sort of the patriarchal structures that that have women feel so disempowered that they don't even have agency over their own bodies anymore, and and we and that's our responsibility, mm -hmm. right? It's it's my responsibility to have agency over my body. Mm -hmm. It's also my responsibility to look at what are the structures um, in place that have me give away my agency that may not be my f quote fault or my responsibility, right? But how do I then want to be within the context mm -hmm. of those structures that are that just are fact mm -hmm. at this point? Right. I yeah. mean, they really are. And I, I believe we're at a tipping point. I do believe that women are rising up. I believe that we are starting to find our own power. Um, I think that men are they are they're scrambling like, well, wait, well, what do I do now? What, how does this, <laughs> how, does this yeah. how does this include me? We want it to include them. Yeah. Oh, my God. Desperately, mm -hmm. desperately. We want it to include them. But we're no longer willing to subjugate ourselves. We're no longer willing uh, to. Um, put our needs on the back burner, to not climb the corporate ladders, to not shatter the glass ceiling just because we don't want to make men uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Like, I, we're just not willing to do that anymore. Some women. I mean, some, when we say, yeah, yes. some, some women. Some, some, men, well, this some women, some men. <laughs> like, but yeah, right. yeah things, exactly. things are definitely different. Things are shifting. And um, and I, I, ha I had a client this morning actually say in a Facebook group, Yes, but if I become that, I don't know what man will meet me there. And I was like, I get it. Like, I get that. That is 100% a concern. Mm -hmm. But do we hold ourselves back and not? Well, I start to think about, you know, this, you know, I've said that to myself, you know, I mean, I, I, um, I'm a person that's constantly growing and learning. Like, I'm still discovering um, how I feel about certain things that happened, you know, 20 years ago, you know, right. and, and and go, oh, that, that doesn't work anymore. It's like right. going through your wardrobe and going, nope, yeah, I'm throwing that I away. I look great in that dry fit. You know what? That doesn't <laughs> yeah. like suit me anymore. Like, that doesn't yeah. suit me. That story that I'm telling myself doesn't no longer fits me. me. Um, so, so, you know, I, th I think about that. I'm constantly growing. And, yeah, I wonder, like, okay, have I started to outgrow um, most of the people around me? And, and I've done this quite a bit. Like, I've, you know, changed friends and things. And so I wonder is... Um, a better way to look at this with all of the information that we have and the ways to connect um, is just to like focus on finding your group not your not your person right your group like find find the people that you really feel that you thrive with that you can share your operational system yeah and um, and you can update it and they're cool with those updates or you know you yeah. can throw some and then um, mm. let other people come into play it, it's it's a harder foundation to um, fall from if that's in play. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, right? We need that that system to to constantly be lifting us up and yeah. holding us. And we can that. do that, I mean, it's like practice too. Because you, as girlfriends, I can mm -hmm. tell you, okay, oh, I'm, you know, I don't really, um, I don't want to get up before 9 a.m., that's not a thing, I like the mornings. But I could tell you that, like, we, hey, we're gonna have breakfast, but I don't want it to be before 9 a.m. or something. Right. And as a friend, you go, okay, yeah, okay, okay cool, 9.30, okay. 10, I'll, I'll whatever. I'll snack if I'm up at 6. So right. We could practice having these conversations about what works for us with our friends and create that foundation and then go into yeah. the intimate relationships, yes. like, yes. with the practice. I love that. That's actually a great, that's, that's a great thing, right? Practice where you're safe. Practice yeah. setting boundaries where you're already safe because so often we learn to set boundaries with the hardest people in yeah. our lives, and it doesn't go well, and then we're no. like, oh, see, it can't do that. No, you rehearse yeah. it, you're gonna say the perfect thing, and then you get in front of them, and you're like, 
it uh, all goes to hell yeah, and it comes I, out like really combative, yeah, or, yeah, right? Yeah. It's not, that's yeah. not helpful, yeah. right? So practice with the people who are safe, who's, who are going to love you into it and love you into uh, becoming comfortable in that ownership. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's talk more about this big, tough decision, you know, like what, should I stay or should I go? Yeah. What are some of the factors that you review with your clients over, like, you know, here's some of the things that we need to look at before we make that decision? Yes. Um, well, the, the biggest thing that we work on is, you know, because I work with women, I don't, I don't have their husbands in the room. This yeah. is not couples therapy. Can, come on back up. Why did you decide to just work with women? Did you like really make a... It's great. It's a, that's a great question. Because yeah. a lot of, because I do get people who are men who are like, do you work with men? And, and my response is always, sure, sure. Mm -hmm. But then they don't follow up. They don't follow through. So okay. it became just, and I also think I'm a woman, right? Yeah. I, no, think I mean, I know, I know I'm a woman. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty clear. Sure. I'm, I'm clear. Um, and I think that my experience lends itself to right. helping women. Um, I think that my, so much of what I do is um, cisgendered, hetero relationship uh, centered mm -hmm. because that's what I am. Mm -hmm. And I don't, it's not that I'm averse to working with with gay couples or um, anything else. I just this is what I know. This is my expert, right. my area of expertise. Yeah. So really, that's it. Yeah. Um, I also think that like over ninety percent of the personal development industry is consumed by women. Unfortunately, yes. God, I want to change that. <laughs> I, we all want to change that. Like men, please start consuming personal development. Men, please yeah. start like please, yes, please. <laughs> like and also male coach. Like we want more male coaches. There are more female coaches in this world than than male. Like we want more male coaches. Let's do this. Um, but that's but that's really why. Okay. So so then back to the question. I'm so, sorry. So I, no, I no, threw, no, no, no. It's real. fine. So um, what are some of these factors that you're telling your your woman clients? Let's look at these so areas. One of the things decide. we look at is like, what is the relationship dynamic, right? Um, unfortunately, a lot of the work that I do is uncovering um, abuse. Uh, there's a lot of emotional abuse happening in the women that come to me. Now, I don't know if this is just what's landing in my lap because I talk about it, or if this is if the numbers are this huge generally speaking i think there's something how do i want to say this i'm going to get in trouble i feel like you, you know when you're going to say something you're like i'm oh, no this is going to get me in trouble um because we're women and we're told we're sensitive right oh you're so sensitive you shouldn't oh don't say you're so sensitive mm -hmm. so we take a long time deciding if if something is emotional emotionally abusive um because we don't want to claim that we're sensitive right so like they, I, I doubt you've ever had a woman come sit down with you and go, I'm being emotionally abused. But you really have to pull it out of them. I do. I do have to pull it out of them. And, and, and you're right. We've been told that we're too sensitive. Mm -hmm. We've been, so a lot of the work that I do is what's his and what's yours? <laughs> and really pulling it apart. Because if he's telling you you're too sensitive, if he's invalidating your feelings, what happens is we start to question ourselves. We question our own feelings. And so a lot of what I do is validation. When they tell me something, it's a lot of me going like, yeah, no, that's actually not okay. Or mm, tell me more about that because it sounds like you might have a, a trigger around this and actually what I'm hearing when he says that is this. So there's a lot yeah. of there's a lot of pulling this stuff apart, yeah. right? Um, and, a, and also permission. I give women permission. Even if you are, you're married to the best guy in the world but you're not happy, Right, he could be the greatest mm. guy in the world. Maybe we're, I don't know this for a fact, but maybe we're not meant to be long-term monogamous creatures, right? I mean, there's enough there's enough evidence. It's okay. Well, and our world has changed so much from like when that was a model, too. You right, know? Yeah. and like you know, are you supposed to be with the same person you know that you chose when you were 25? I don't know if you're 45. Like maybe not. Maybe you've outgrown the relationship. Mm -hmm. That doesn't. That's not a bad thing. Right? Like, what did you learn? What kind of, what kind of, um, how grateful are you for what you had? Yeah. If it's, so, so there's a little, there's permission, there's education. Do people you, not, when you find that they're not giving themselves permission, is it usually religion? That's. Often it is. Yeah. I get a lot. Yes. I have clients, because I'm a coach, I can work with people from all over the world, uh, mm -hmm. all over the world, but mostly uh, they're all over the country. Mm -hmm. A lot of clients in the Bible Belt. Um, 
uh, from from Orthodox communities, right? So there's there is a lot of that religion, yeah. but it's also self esteem. It's also you've been you've been told you don't know what you want. You've been told no 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 you're wrong yeah. you're wrong. He's fine. He's great. What's your problem? And first of all, one of the things that I'm really passionate is about women being honest, <laughs> that uh, telling our stories, which is why I was so excited to <laughs> come and talk to you, right? Because what we do is we we paint we are constantly comparing the insides of our marriages to the outsides of everyone else's marriages. Because the Facebook it's version. The Facebook version, <laughs> right? Yeah. And then we're feeling terrible about our own relationships, but we're we're not. This is not truth, mm -hmm. right? There was a woman recently in Colorado who was murdered by her husband. I mean, I'm pretty sure they they at this point concluded it was her husband. He was the prime suspect. She did nothing but post on Facebook all day, every day, about how beautiful and perfect and wonderful her marriage was. Mm -hmm. Obviously, she was not telling the truth, yeah. or she was scared, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, if I see that kind of, you know, protesting, like, protesting too much, right? I'm I'm going to be a little concerned that there's something yeah. else under there. So, so what I really do with women is I I I want them to tell their stories. I want them to get honest. I educate them, and I I give them permission, but I also help them take responsibility. Mm -hmm. I have a very in depth inventory process that I do with my uh, clients that's really based on uh, taking personal responsibility for everything. It doesn't, you know, here's the thing. If, if we're in emotionally abusive relationships, there's a reason for it. There's a reason we mm -hmm. are attracted to that. Mm -hmm. The reason we, there's a reason we chose that. We have to take responsibility for that. It's not our fault, right? Yeah. We're, we're still victims of abuse, right? But there's nothing more empowering than a woman taking responsibility yeah. for it. I 100% agree. I have a very low tolerance for people that don't know their role in situations. Yeah. And I know as soon as like as soon as I take on my own role in a situation even if it's unflattering, yeah. <laughs> even if it's not my best stuff, it's oh. a lot easier to overcome. Yep. I'm like I can I can deal with this cuz yes. I'm taking I'm going to take responsibility. Wasn't my best self. Didn't yep. do didn't show up in the best way possible. Yep. But um, you know, it's I could do it. But it's I have zero tolerance for people that can't do that. Like yep. it's like that's the number one thing. It's yep. like come on, we got to yep. get where we are not. This is this is not a perfect system. It is it requires many updates and a lot of maintenance, and we just need to get real with that. And when we put two people together, holy hell, we need so yep. much more right? maintenance. Like, Stuff goes haywire, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, right? <laughs> yeah. And if I can own mine and you can own yours, we're be we're going to be better off. Boy, for oh sure. boy, for sure. Yeah, you know? like that Absolutely. should be like well, how we come to the table. Okay. Here's what I know I wasn't great at. <laughs> yeah. Know, like, and, yeah. Then, and then the other person says it. We're like, good. Okay, now we're at a like an even playing field. Now yes. let's try to work on this. And you know, the thing about that too is that doing that might save your marriage. Yeah. Right? It also might not, but it will save your divorce. And that's what I uh, that's my biggest hope. I mean, I'm I'm thrilled for anyone whose marriages can be saved through my process. Mm -hmm. Um however, what I know is that all the therapy in the world, all the 12 step programs, all of the couples therapy, the group couples therapy, the individual therapy could not save my marriage. Mm -hmm. So you have been married before. Oh, I am married and divorced. Married and divorced. All right. And, and I, have a, I have a 13 year old kid. Yeah. So like I've been through this as you know, this is, I've, I've walked this path. Mm -hmm. um, and, but when it came time for our divorce, all of that work, we were like, hey, it didn't work to save our marriage. It's gonna, we're gonna we're gonna save our our divorce. We'll do we'll do a good job at this. Like we we'll, had Imago dialogues. Speaking of Harville nice. Hendricks, yep. we had Imago dialogues in mediation. And when we were done, we looked over at our attorney, and he was like, "What did you just do? What just happened here?" Yeah. And for those of you who don't know, an Imago dialogue is a very specific way way of dialoguing through a problem. Um, well, that three, was, three factors, right? Mirroring, validation, mm -hmm. and empathy. So mirroring, did I get that right? Repeating back what you said. So before you react, which 
I love mirroring the best. Oh, God. Because you just have to sit on your hands and just. Well, you could hear because you don't know what you're triggered. And if you mirror back and like you're emphasizing a word that they didn't emphasize, that fi fixes like 98% yes. of the problems it right there. It's in like, the moment. oh, you said blue. I'm hearing red. Oh, geez, sorry. You know, yeah. like I'm putting something on you that mm -hmm. it shouldn't be there. Mm -hmm. And then being able to say, I understand how you could feel that way, you know, to just let them know, like, yeah, I get it. I mean, I may not. You um, must, I can imagine that you must be feeling, that's the other thing mm -hmm. is that you're like, I imagine you must be feeling frustrated. You have to put yourself, you're forced to put yourself in the other person's experience. Yeah. And that's empathy. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's a roadmap to empathy, yeah. right? And so we did that in our mediation while we were getting divorced. Yeah. And it was great. It was great, yeah. you know, and and there were a lot of surprises that came up out of that. I was adamant I was keeping the house, adamant. We had an Imago dialogue. I heard his point of view, and I was like, "Oh, you totally need to keep the house." It was done, mm -hmm. you know. So it so and what it did was it 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 allowed us to put our son in the center. I was just going to say, co-parenting must be so much easier after developing this practice now. Yep, hundred yeah. percent. And that's what I want. That's what I want for people. Whether they are, whether they stay together or they or they go their separate ways, if you can hold your children, because so much of divorce and what gets really nasty, it's about ego and it's about winning yeah. and it's about vindictiveness, it's about resentments that you know now oh okay now we're in now we're on the war, war on the <clears throat> field of war now we're in battle now I can get mine over on yeah. you and that's I mean as a product of divorce I just I I joke about this middle child from the Midwest product of divorce. Of course, I care about relationships. <laughs> like, what else would I care about? Um, right. And improving on it. But, yeah. you know, I that is, that's the hard stuff right there. Because if you are caught up in the middle of that, you go into the world believing you're a product. You really have a hard time yeah. of, like, really understanding that you're not. You know, that you're a person with feelings and, mm -hmm. yeah. you know. Yes. And, you know, as a child... Going through divorce, you know what we do is we we're always saying to our children, "This isn't your fault." You know, mommy and daddy love you so much. We're still going to be a family. Like this is a script that we repeat, right. but our actions do nothing to support it. Yeah. And you know, I have watched people, friends of mine actually, um, say that to their to their children, and then hold their children in their arms while screaming and railing and abusing their the spouse that they're divorcing. And it's like, how can you tell your child that you're that you're still going to be a family, and that it's not their fault, and then have them witness that kind of stuff? Yeah, it's so confusing. <laughs> so yeah, confusing. it is. Yeah, it is. Um, there, I have a whole other. There's a whole other tangent that I that I have about this. Really, that um, in in many other countries, uh, in in Europe and South America. We they they force like a two year waiting period between the date of separation and before you can start. Wow, you can file for divorce. Mm -hmm. And it really what what we tend to do in the U S. is that we make the biggest legal and financial decisions of our lives in the midst of the biggest upheaval in our emotional upheaval in our lives. And it's not a cute combination. No, it's very dangerous. <laughs> yeah, right. We need those couple of years to just be like, or a year just to kind of like. Sure, separate everything out, move out, do all of that. It's a, re it's yeah. a really good point. I mean, you know, um, the decisions are important. Decisions have, you know, impact that you're going to be dealing with for a long time. So being able to think through a decision, and go, I do, do first of all, first question, do I have to make this right now? Right. It's like, is there a gun to my head that I have to make this decision right now? Chances are the answer is no. Yeah. So, uh, you know, knowing that you have to do it, but like allowing yourself to take time, gather tools yes. that are going to allow you to make that decision in the best way possible. And process your emotions. Yeah. Get at, blame and resentment is the worst. Yes. It is the worst place to make any decision. Or blame, resentment, and entitlement. And until, don't get me started on entitlement. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to make decisions. You don't want to make a decision from that place. So part of my process is getting weeding through the blame and the resentment, right? To get to a place of forgiveness, even if you can't fully forgive, to get to a place where you're clear on what your part was, if they're going to see their part, whatever, but really clear out the cobwebs and get to a place of clarity, mm -hmm. right? And almost like a neutral, like, yeah, that was mine, that's yours. 
I, I'm not responsible for another person's like process or recovery or um, forgiveness or anything, like mm -hmm. or taking responsibility. As long as I can keep my side of the street clean and I know what's on my side of the street, that's all I'm responsible for. Mm -hmm. So you're so you, you're looking at these different factors. Definitely, there's probably a greater list when children are involved mm -hmm. um, to make the decision. And even then, you're probably checking in. Are you sure? Are you sure? You're sure. Yeah. Um, and and then what? I mean, what happens? Uh, well, let's let's talk about consequences of making this decision either way. Like so. Yeah. Um, have you uh, ha had an experience of working with someone where absolutely all the signs were like, you got to go, like this is not mm -hmm. good for you, and they mm -hmm. stay? I've had one client who stayed. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't heard from her again. I don't know. It wasn't all signs. Mm -hmm. He was actually quite a lovely man. He just wasn't listening. Mm -hmm. So here's you know what I hear nine times out of ten, mm -hmm. literally is a woman has been begging her husband to go to therapy for years. And the men are like, it's fine, or we can work it out. We don't need therapy. And then, you know, they try to hold on, hold on, hold on. And then the women are like, oh, I'm done. And the men are like, wait, let's go to therapy. And very often for women, mm -hmm. we get to that point when we're done, we're done. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, women, when we're done, we're <laughs> done. Now, this particular woman went to her husband and he he was like, oh wait, let's go to therapy. I want to work on this. And she had some, she had room left in her heart to do that. Mm -hmm. Great. You know, um, I have another client who kind of came to a similar conclusion, but then, you know, six months later was like, I know, like I, I'm, I'm done. Mm -hmm. I can't do this anymore. Uh, I have not had anyone I don't know anyone who, because here's the deal, you don't come to this decision lightly. Right. You agonize over it for years. By the time women come to me, they've already been agonizing for years. Mm -hmm. So I don't know anyone who's made this decision and regretted it. I really yeah. don't. Yeah. You know, I do have a friend who remarried her ex-husband. Wow. And then got divorced again. Wow. For all the same reasons. 50%, <laughs> 68%. Yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, what does some of the post work do? So at, look like so after someone has left, I mean, you're mm. still working. Yeah. You're still oh, like God, yeah. you're you're adjusting your operational manual and oh, how to Yeah, you're still healing how to and there's grief. Yeah. The the grieving process goes on. I still grieve. I've been divorced for 10 years. And I still have layers of grief. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult to, when you divorce someone that you have um, kids with, you don't just get to say bye and move on. You actually have to continue to be in a relationship with that person for the rest of your life. Yes. Which puts them, you know, there's a lot of in breakup um, uh, coaching and advice and everything. There's all this like, you know, no contact <laughs> stuff. Like we don't get the luxury. Right. I don't get the luxury of no contact. I had to see my ex-husband get remarried. I have to go to his house every week. <laughs> like, you know, like it's in my face. Yeah. So there's there's and I'm happy for him and our kids are better off in that marriage than they were in ours. Yeah. But you know, it's still there I still have feelings. Yeah. This is reality. And so there's still a grieving process to go through. There's still custody schedules to be reworked again and again because maybe it works for one doesn't work for the other we have to like it's a it's a constant trial and error mm -hmm. there's so much of this that goes on forever and then there's rebuilding you know for women especially for stay-at-home moms mm -hmm. I'm also a business consultant so I help people build businesses I help uh, build websites I do like all of that stuff yeah. also you yeah. know it's sort of sort of on, on the side but then also it's actually all quite quite right. part and parcel right what are you gonna do next mm -hmm. how are we getting you set up yeah that makes sense yeah so we've we've talked mostly about divorce and yeah. uh, male female relationships Let, let's look at like um, some of the signs some just basic core signs that you should leave any type of relationship whether it be yeah. Um, a toxic work relationship, a friendship. Um, you know, let's let's talk yeah. about that. Well, one of the you know one of the first things I think that we 
we often forget, right? We're so in our heads trying to figure this out. Oh, I don't have that problem at all. No, 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 I know. I'm I don't either. Kidding. I have no idea. I've, I've, I've never I've heard, in my head. I've heard other people have this problem. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know any of those people. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. If you're one of those people, this is for you. It's fine. Um, the thing, the actual, the truth is that we know things in our bodies. No. We just know everything. We really do. So the first thing is to sort of close your eyes, check in, and ask yourself what you know. Yeah. Right? Does it feel bad? Really? Does yeah. this feel wrong? We are, and especially for women, we're like, we're super intuitive. Men are too. Mm -hmm. By the way, humans are. Um, but we're, we're super intuitive. So if there's a, if it feels bad in, in our bodies, yeah. in our physical space, like that's probably the first clue. I, I like this before going to a doctor, by the way, because you know, you wake up with a stomach ache and there's no reason for the stomach ache. You didn't have like bad, you know, yep. food the night before. And yep. you're like, what's bothering, like asking yourself that first, why, what is wrong? what's bothering me? What's yeah. in my environment? Like what, what am I stressed over? What am I worried about? Um, you know, mine is uh, fatigue. You know, it's like, why am I so fatigued? Yes. Like, what's in my environment? What's in yes. my world right now that I am so tired? And yes. Like, <laughs> and yeah, I just saw like there was like a meme on Facebook this morning that was like, you're actually probably are getting enough sleep. We we blame our exhaustion yeah. on lack of sleep before looking at anything else, yeah. and we probably are getting enough sleep. Well, I mean, maybe not, but right. you know, you're probably getting enough sleep. Why else would you be exhausted? Yeah. There yeah. are a lot more reasons. Yeah. And and it only takes one toxic relationship to drain <gasps> your entire course. system. And it doesn't, it could be any type. It could be a friendship. It could be a coworker. It could be yep. a cousin. It could be any type. Yep. And it's like, and you, and we, we just do that. We just do this as humans. Like we put all of our attention on what's not working. I mean, look at Yelp reviews. We only Yelp review when it's when we horrible. Hate them. We yep. might, when it's exceptional, put right. a review, you know, take the time to put a review. Yeah. But those are far, you know, few and far between. It's the ones that are just horrible. And we focus on it. And yeah. then every, we see our girlfriends, we see our friends, and we're like, oh, yeah, this terrible thing. You know, like we focus on it. Right. Um, but when we focus on it, we don't realize how much energy that's taking up that could be used for something that actually works for you, you know, that right. like does feel good. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And, I, and I do think the process is very similar for all relationships, right? Yeah. For talk, like, okay, what's my part? Why am I still staying in this toxic relationship? Or, you know, we talk about toxic relationships. We sort of throw that around a yeah. lot, right? So, so like, what is a toxic relationship? It's something that poisons your system, yeah. right? That's what a toxin is. It's something that is poisoning your system. So... How, you know, how to identify that? And it's it just, it just popped in my head. It's poisoning your system. It's likely to be toxic when it's a direct contradiction to something that you value and believe. Yes. And 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 if your value and belief is good, right? You know, like because you could have values and beliefs that are actually not serving you, and that might be an opportunity to check in. Yeah. Talk to me. So the way that I work with values, and yeah. this is actually a key thing that I do with my clients, is that we, you know, we identify values. Values are actually not, they're not morals, they're not shoulds, they're actually just key um, belief systems that we hold mm -hmm. in ourselves. And I don't know that they can be wrong or bad or not good. Mm -hmm. Like if there's an actual core value of yours, you know, one of your core values that came up today is personal responsibility, Yeah. yeah. right? <laughs> right, like when there's something that you can't stand in the world, right? For me, it's injustice and inequality, mm -hmm. personal responsibility, entitlement, right? Like I value personal responsibility. I value, um, you know, equality and justice, mm -hmm. right? So if there's something that makes you crazy, what's the opposite? It's probably that you're having a value that's getting stepped on and pushed against, mm -hmm. right? And it's 100% true. It doesn't mean the other person's bad or wrong. It just means your values are really misaligned, mm -hmm. right? I have, and, and yes, and it and it's a order of placement too, because yes. that, they could value that somewhat. It's just not a core value, right? You know, you're right, or they value something else. I had, um, I had an interaction with somebody online, online dating, who um, <laughs> another show. It is. It's a whole. It is a whole other show. We could totally do that. I'll, I'll come back for it. Yeah. Um, who ha clearly had a, a, a different value system than I did about certain things, and mm -hmm. he clearly valued um, money and the economy 
and the money in his bank account more than he valued uh, community and um, you know the welfare of others. Mm -hmm. Let's just put it that way. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't gonna it, I wasn't gonna make him wrong for it. It was just really clear that we were not gonna be a match. Mm -hmm. And that if I did choose him, a that was my <laughs> that would have been my bad, yeah. right? Yeah. And that we would have this would have become a toxic relationship mm -hmm. as I tried to change him or he tried to change me. Yeah. Right. Right. So, um, so I think values are a great place to look. Yeah. In relationships that aren't working. Yeah. And th and that's you know my I think my last question on this topic was like well what can we do before we get into these situations where we've got to make the decision to stay or t to go and like we've actually answered that in so many ways throughout this yeah. it's like really um really having the awareness of what is this <laughs> what is operate what is in control and what is operate you know yeah. what is my operational system right and um do i need to make little adjustments mm -hmm. you know do i need a 2.5 version yes. you know what, what does that look like yeah uh knowing all of that and and then the next level is that is being able to communicate that. Communication is everything. Um, communication is literally everything. But I, but I do think you know, it, we get into relationships so unconsciously. Yeah. And so often it is actually our unconscious that's choosing things. But we also are just not conscious about the relationships that we're choosing. Um, and you know, I have my my friend who just got married, who I was talking about before. She talks about you create love. You don't find it. It's not hiding somewhere. You create it. You create your relationship. Is it over here? Yeah, is it over here? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Like, no, no. Right? No, you create it, and you create it intentionally and diligently every single day. And when we talk about relationships being work, I don't think that's a bad thing. It means that I'm putting conscious intention behind the process mm -hmm. of relating. Yeah. Right? Which, right. Like, what could be more gorgeous than that? Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't even know. I can't even say anything on top of that. That's <laughs> it is. And I, this concept of, I, I remember like my first relationships in my twenties. You know, yesterday, um, <laughs> you know, just just yesterday, just yesterday. Uh, that this was the main argument that like, oh, this should be so easy. Like, no, no. It, this is this is the hardest thing that there is. Like yeah. how how complex this system is. You know, and and. I believe, and even though we are doing a lot of work in AI, and you know, there's all kinds of things that they'll say computers will pass us, but the, nothing is more complex than this. No. And um, but as soon as you get a grasp on that, and you're willing to uh, adjust and, and talk it out, I think we're okay. Like it just yeah. becomes easier. A little work goes a long way. Yes, but and you do have to work at it. And like there's no way. It I, I had a client say to me once, if I had done as much thought and processing about leaving this marriage as I had as I about about getting into this marriage as I am doing getting out of it I probably wouldn't have gotten into it in the first place right. you know we just were like hey, it's great let's it's, do this <laughs> let's do this yeah is there anything else that you want to say on this topic Oh my gosh, no. I think we've covered it. You think we covered I think it? If so. we didn't, I know there's a quiz on her site that you could take if you're making this decision. And, uh, and I respond to all my emails. And you so. respond to all her emails. <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to send you seven tonight. Oh, just yeah. to test. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks for this conversation. We're going to switch gears a little mm. bit. Um, uh, so I like, you know, we get to do two more things together that um, I think you'll like both of them. So um, the first is, so I always ask the guests to uh, share a heart swell, mm -hmm. and a heart swell is just like a shout out of love or you know of encouragement or acknowledgement to someone that's like, hey, I didn't get here alone. I'm not an island. You've helped me. You've inspired me. It might even be um, someone that you don't know that doesn't know that they're encouraging you, or it might be somebody that you do know, and you want to just say, hey, um, I see you. Uh, so do you? Does someone come to mind when? Oh I my gosh. And it could be a group. It could be, yeah. It is. It actually is a group, okay. and it's it's my it's my my tribe. I'm getting a little weepy. <gasps> it happens sometimes. <laughs> um, I just got back from uh, Mexico, where one of my closest coach friends was getting married, and I was there with a group of coaches, and not all of my coach tribe was there. Uh, which was made me super sad. But my coach tribe are the people that keep me going every single day. And I want 
I really want for everyone in the world, especially women, to have that kind of tribe, the people who are going to, con you know, these people call me out all the time, but with so much love um, and so much compassion. And um, they hold me to my values, they hold me to my highest self, they hold me to the things that I say that I want, that I'm often really scared to achieve and go after. Um, and I think everyone needs that. Mm -hmm. And so that's my, my heart swell is to my tribe and my, the women who support me, not just my coach friends, but all of the women who are my closest friends and who just lift me and push me forward and we do it all for each other. Awesome. Yeah. Everybody needs this. We, we've actually talked about this earlier in the show. You need that group. Yes. Um, as you were sharing your Heartswell question came up, and I'm going to ask you, mm -hmm. um, so the idea of having nothing but coach friends kind of terrifies me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's not I, easy. Because well, I actually, so I'll tell you why, and maybe this was a male-female di dynamic, but I had, I've had coaches over the years. I don't have, I have mentors and friends mostly, and a lot of my friends are therapists, so mm -hmm. that's something. Mm -hmm. Um, but I had an experience with a male coach that did not know when to stop coaching. <laughs> always ask permission. Yeah, right? My friends always ask permission. Do you want coaching on this? Yeah. Um, I'm about to say some stuff. Yeah. We, we use a, a voice messaging app uh, called Voxer. Mm -hmm. And so, my, you know, one of my friends will say, I'm about to say some stuff. If you're not ready to hear it, listen to this later. Yeah. Right? Or what do you need from me right now? Do you need coaching on this or do you just need me to listen? See, and <clears throat> I love you for saying that. I mean, th this is part of the reason why I do this show. Like, if you don't know, if we put, we put all this emphasis on relating and communication, and, you know, I think there's nothing more important either. I think it, it saves us in so many different situations and we're not practicing it. I get really concerned about mm -hmm. the world. Um, you know, the bullying, the, the fast memes. And I call it, it's all fast food content yes. at some point. It's just yep. nonsense. Um, but... So I lost my train of thought. I knew it was going to happen. Well, you're, I think it was about permission. Right? Yeah, about, asking or, about yeah, asking permission. Oh, I know what it is. So if you don't know what to say, your saving grace at any time is just to ask a question. Mm -hmm. Really, if you're if you're afraid of how it's going to come across or um, hurting someone's feelings or it, you know, but you want to communicate, just ask some questions. Yeah, is it okay for us to have this conversation? I need to. Uh, there's something bothering me. Can we talk? Um, mm -hmm. There's something that happened yesterday, and I, I need to check in with you. Can you tell me why that happened, or why mm -hmm. why you did that a certain way? Like, yes. The question yes. is Curiosity. the most underutilized you know, tool in our communication toolbox. Yes. And we, we think we have to have the answers, but it's actually far more important to have the questions. Oh, my God. It's so, it's so much more important. You're going to love how I sign off the show if you haven't seen it already. Um, all right. So one more thing. Thank you for that. Thank yeah. you for clarifying yeah. that. Ask yes, for permission. Absolutely. Okay. So yeah. I think I would dig your coach friends if you're asking. Yeah. For permission. Totally. Um, I'd like to be a part of that trip. Okay. <laughs> uh, you're totally right. in. Yeah. So the last thing we get to do together is um, I like to issue a social challenge of the week. Mm -hmm. That's just something for someone to try to kind of up their communication game or their relating game. Um, I don't have anything in mind, but I always try to pull something from what we've talked about. You're getting like, like excited. I don't know. I'm like, ooh, I don't know. All right, well, let's just talk it out then. Yeah. Um, what could it be? Um, so our topic is should you stay or should it go? Really, we talked a lot about this operational manual. I mean, maybe it's a journaling um, social challenge of the week of like, oh, never thought about my operational manual. Like, what's important to me? Yeah. Like, when you write down um, what's really running at all times, like, what's the key functionality of this this need, yeah. this being, um, and see what happens. I think I also, I'm going to add to this because okay, I love this. Yeah. But I'm going to also add that that you just take it out of your head. Yeah. Right? And do what we talked about, which is just close your eyes, take some like three cleansing breaths, check in and ask yourself, what do I know? What do I know about my operating system? how I function, what I need in the world. Like, what do I know? Yeah. Because we just, we do know. We yeah. really do. Why do you, um, from uh, one heady person that's been accused of being in her head too much. <laughs> <laughs> to another. Yeah, right? Oh, yeah? See? Oh, okay, good. Oh, yeah. We're in good company. This is the whole blue black thing. Um, you know, for a person that hears that, it's like, how, why, how do I get out of my head? But you're asking me to think. Like, yeah. It, it's... Um, Sometimes thought, I mean, I want you to answer this. I'm going to answer this and how I think. 
what goes on, why I need to get out of my head sometimes is because sometimes I'm, I'm forcing thought. I'm like, yep. I'm forcing conclusion. I'm forcing the answers and not allowing maybe my environment or people that are in it to um, be a part of that. Mm -hmm. or, and, and sometimes that's the spiritual stuff too. That's mm -hmm. just like what's around me. Um, how would you describe that? Or like why, why do we have to get out of our head sometimes? Why do we need that space of I don't have all the answers? Yeah. Uh, well, it is, it is. We're forcing results. We're, you know, forcing things um, in our heads. And often in our heads, we have a battle going on between sort of like good and evil. It's our, it's our inner knowing and then our, and our, our inner critic. Yeah. Right. It's our inner guide and our inner critic are constantly like batting it out. And you're in your head going like trying to do analysis. Right. But when we, when we drop it and we ask ourselves like, what do I already know in, in like from here into here. Mm -hmm. Right. It's a very different experience when we breathe into, it's our gut, it's our intuition. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're opening up access to. And our heads don't, they don't, they just, they're overworked. <laughs> really, you know, you know, they say that like my head is a really dangerous neighborhood, <laughs> you know, because my head is what's been conditioned. My brain is what's been yeah. conditioned and poisoned and blah, 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 right? Mm -hmm. And confused and stirred up. My intuition knows. Yeah. It, there is something so special, though, about just taking a couple breaths and, and mm -hmm. then, and what's that first thing that comes up and you're like, oh, that, that's different than what I was trying to force the answer to be. Totally. There is something about it. And I, I wish, you know, you know, there's not a right or wrong answer of how to approach this, but there is definitely something that happens when you allow yourself to breathe and stop forcing stuff and then the kind of clarity that comes out of that and I think that's what we're talking about totally. so um sorry so that so the social challenge of the week is kind of journaling but it's a little bit meditation and and taking some time with yourself and like you know what's what's running this right now yeah and um and seeing what kind of adjustments you can make from there mm -hmm. Absolutely. I like it. I like it a lot. That's that's it. Whew, we came up with one. <laughs> we did. Yeah. <laughs> we always do. It, you know, it happens. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, Kate, uh, this was amazing. I mean, we this could talk so, so much longer. I might have to have you back and talk about dating. Oh. Because that's just yeah. nutty. <laughs> I will do that. Yeah. All right. <laughs> awesome. So we can find more about Kate at her website. It's kateanthony.com. And she's on social media at Coach Kate. Anthony, yep. uh, Facebook and Instagram. Facebook and Instagram. Yeah, so you can find her there. And then she does a podcast called The Divorce Survival Guide. And, uh, and like we mentioned earlier, there's a quiz on her site that, that uh, you can, two-minute quiz that you can find two out, minutes? should I stay or should I go? And it's mostly about divorce. Yeah. Mostly about divorce. But um, she will answer you. <laughs> oh, be careful what you wish for. <laughs> Funny. All right. So thank you. Uh, next week's show, I'm going to have a doctor on that makes house calls. I'm so excited about this. Ooh, he's got some really, too. Yeah, really interesting thoughts about health care. And uh, so that's going to be an interesting conversation. Super cool. Um, and, you know, that brings us to the end of the show. As always, I want to hear from you, too. You know, if, if something came up in the show that you want more information on or want to chat with Kate or I, reach out to us on social media. You know where to find her. I'm Relate With Stuff on Instagram and Facebook. And as always, you know what I say, guys. You know what's important. And we talked about it today with questioning. Just relate with more curiosity. Just start there. Relate with more curiosity. See you next week. Bye.